Hey guys, today we're going to learn why rockets have fins. Now when I was about 8, my dad and I first started launching modern rockets. And ever since then, I've always been fascinated by them. I've always known that the fins were there to stabilize the rocket, but I never really thought why. So in this long overdue second part of the rocket series, we're going to take a look at this. So modern rockets are designed to go straight up. But without fins, just a little breeze can make them come crashing down. But those fins help to correct that. If you look at a rocket being pushed by some wind from the right, you can see the other side is pushed left. But this rocket is still going up, so that part sticking out will actually create a lift in the opposite direction of the wind as it's being pushed back into place, so to speak. This is called a restoring force, as it restores the rocket back to its original position. But why the fins? Wouldn't the force of air push the body back and create lift without the fins? Well, technically yes, but the purpose of fins goes well beyond that, and it all has to do with the center of gravity and the center of pressure. Now, The center of gravity, also known as the center of mass, is pretty simple. It's just a point where the average force of gravity is concentrated. In fact, you can find it pretty easily by balancing the rocket on a piece of string, and the point where it balances, which is right here, is the center of gravity. So for this rocket, it's about 11 and a half inches from the nose. Now the next important point on a rocket is the center of pressure, and it's similar to the center of gravity. Except it's not the point where gravity is concentrated, but the point where air pressure is concentrated. This center of pressure will determine how the rocket spins. So if the center of pressure is located behind the center of gravity, then we'll have that restoring force we talked about earlier. However, if it's in front of the center of gravity, this can cause some problems. The rocket will always rotate around the center of gravity. So if the center of pressure is in front of it, then the lift will be pushing in the same direction as the wind, which means the rocket will just spin uncontrollably around the center of gravity. This is called a destabilizing force, which as you could probably guess is not ideal. Adding fins to the back of the rocket can fix this by moving the center of pressure. This happens because there is more surface area and thus more air pressure at the back of the rocket. However, adding fins isn't the only way to do this. Bottle rockets, for instance, have those long sticks uh, that bring the center of pressure behind the center of gravity, making them stable, like the rockets. So now, let's do a little test. Here, I have two identical rockets, except this one has fins, and this one doesn't. Now, I know you want to see the rockets launch, so we'll do that first, and then we can calculate the center of pressure and the center of gravity to understand what happened. In three, two, one. It is! It went right behind that building right there. All right, I think it landed like right back here. Uh, all right, it's up here somewhere. It landed like in this area. As you may have predicted, the fin rocket had a very nice and stable flight. Actually, a little bit too stable because it went so far up that we lost it. And the non-fin one just kind of spun around in circles and spectacularly crashed into the ground in a nice explosion. So let's figure out why. Now calculating the center of pressure can be pretty difficult because the pressure on different parts of the rocket changes as the angle of attack changes. And this difference in pressure is actually what creates that lift we were talking about. So calculating it requires a lot of difficult calculus. And as a general rule of thumb, I try to avoid calculus outside of school. But luckily, model rockets are a bit simpler, and the stakes are a lot lower than those big NASA or SpaceX rockets. So if we make the assumption that the pressure is the same throughout the rocket, which is mostly true if the rocket's going straight up, and the center of pressure really just becomes the center of area. 
And one simple way to calculate this is by tracing out a 2D slice of the rocket on a piece of cardboard like I have here, and then balancing it on your finger to find the center, like right here. However, we have a slight problem. On here, the center of pressure, theoretically, is in front of the center of gravity. And this can't be right. If you dig into the Barrowman equations, which are a set of equations discovered by a NASA engineer to calculate the center of pressure, we see a few things. First, the rocket body is totally ignored at low angles, which makes sense because it's not really interacting much with the air. And second, the force of the fins is disproportionately higher. For example, I calculated the area of one of the fins to be a little less than three inches. And since it's only a 2D slice, it works out to about one and a half fins. However, after doing the Barrowman equations, I got a force of nearly 13 inches. Now all said and done, I calculated the CP on this fin rocket to be about 13 inches from the tip, which works out to about right here in front of the fins. And this is pretty ideal, as the sweet spot for the center of pressure is about one body diameter, or one inch in this case, behind the center of gravity. Now, I'm not exactly sure how accurate the Barrowman equations are for finless rockets, but theoretically, the CP should only be two inches from the nose. Now, personally, I think it'd be a bit further back, but regardless, it was pretty unstable, to say the least. Now, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed watching this as much as I enjoyed creating this video, then please leave a like or subscribe. And if you would like to see more videos in the model rocket science series, then please let me know in the comments. And thanks to all my lovely patrons for making these videos happen. Thanks.